Hello everybody, good day to you. It's actually evening, it's late the day. I'm here late the day because uh, this 2011 Lexus RX 350 was just dropped off by the towing truck. It is a no cranking, no starting. So uh, let's hop in real quick and see what's going on with this unit. Let's see what we've got here. First of all, we have approximately, powering on, we have power yes we do 90,259 miles on the odometer starting the engine mm, negative it just kind of clicks foot on the brake foot off the brake okay that tells me that the uh, brake pedal switch is working starting the engine yep I heard a click from down below and that is all hmm interesting Hmm, nothing. What's the dealio? Starting lock activated. Let's try it with the door shut. Starting the engine. It's a negative. No crank, no start. Okay, let us pop an Z hood. Let's check down below, make sure the battery is connected properly. We'll see if we can't get to the starter. We'll check the uh, the solenoid wire to the starter, make sure that that thing is getting power when we command it to crank. And then uh, if it is, then we'll go from there. And if it's not, we'll go from there. So stay tuned because this is going to be a very good video. Okie dokes, the hood has been popped. Let's see what we have. I can see you. What do we got here? Hmm, got a bunch of covers. That's what we have here. Okay, I think my starter is right around this area somewhere batteries right here in this area let's uh let's pull these covers back real quick like and see if we can't get into the guts over here and uh, determinate what is going on come off clips i know this lexus i've uh i put these clips in because it was missing clips so i got it some new ones i remember you lexi yeah what do you guys think Lexi for plural of the Lexus. Should we call it Lexus or Lexi? I think that multiple Lexus should be called Lexi. You guys think about that one real quick. Comment down below. I'm gonna go inside and get a trim tool to pull those little clippy clips out. Trim tool, trim tool, where are you? That one. All right, let's get this thing out of the way. We'll check our battery connectors and that one's good. That one's good. It's uh, not exactly bolted down all the way. Who did that? Interesting. Anyway, our starter motor should be right down there. See that right down there? What I'm looking for is that connector right there. If I can get a hold of that connector, run a, uh, a voltmeter to it, and then try to crank it, we should see power there. If we see power, at that connector that's going to tell me that the solenoid in the starter has failed and this vehicle will require a replacement starter so bear with me while i disconnect that guy right there what do we have a flat spade connection looks like it okay let me go fetch the meter real quick you know i didn't have to uh, come back in a second time had i been more forward thinking i would have brought the meter out with me when uh I came in to get the trim tool, but I was not thinking, so had to make a second trip. Efficiency. A little jumper lead right here, good to go. All right, I think I'm prepared enough at this point to conduct a parking lot diagnosis. We shall see. Okay, so first things first, let's power up the meter. We're gonna connect our uh, negative lead to the ground on the battery, and uh, let's go ahead and check battery voltage just to make sure that for some reason this thing does not have a dead new battery. And I say new battery because I know it's new because my guy said it's new. Because last time I was here, I found out this battery was weak and uh, I recommended replacement under Costco warranty, of course. See, 1122. Anyway, enough, enough rambling. 12.28 mm, volts. It's not the greatest. Tell you what, let's, uh, I know what I want to do. Let's run the meter up and over so I can see it from the cabin and we'll try to crank with the meter. Displaying it to us what battery voltage is. That way, 
if we see a thing drop down to like six volts or something silly, we know that this battery is, is junk. Let's try that. There we go, 12.28 volts. And hitting our button here and see what our meter tells us. Nope, I'm hearing the starter. All right, what I need to do here is get a hold of the pin on that connector down there. We're gonna put our test probe down into the pin and make connection. There we go, we'll leave that guy hanging out right there. Our meter is grounded to battery ground and we will connect this, uh, this little blue wire here to that wire and when we crank, we should see voltage showing up at that pin. If we do, then we can uh, hypothesize that the starter has failed. Powered on. And look at that, 12 volts. Cranking off, back on, 12 volts. So it does look like the starter motor is kaput. Oh, looky here. It appears that uh, they've suspected a faulty starter motor already because I see some tappy tap marks on uh, on that cylinder right there. See the scratches and whatnot? That means they were probably banging on it trying to get the thing to uh, to crank over. Okay. I'm gonna make one more attempt to start this. You see, uh, I plugged that connector back into the solenoid and I have back probed it with that blue test pin. See that? So what I'm going to do is we're just gonna run this uh, blue wire straight to battery positive and it should uh, uh, it's not must not be making connection hang on it should uh, attempt to uh, make that starter turn over but I don't think I'm getting connection on my pin back probing can be a little a little dicey it's not working okay let's see what this thing does you hear it going you hear the solenoid click so it wants to start, it wants to turn over, but it uh, it's not, that's a fail. Oh, and look, it stopped, it stopped clicking. Zzz. Yeah, all right, we're done here. Diagnosis complete, vehicle needs starter motor. Let me go ahead and get one ordered and uh, we'll get to it. Let's get all our test goodies out of here for now. We don't need this stuff. Have to push this in tomorrow. All right, it's the next day, and I've got a starter unit here for this uh, this Lexus. Uh, however, I don't want to do it in the parking lot, and I don't have a hand to help me push it inside. So, I'm going to attempt to jump start this starter and make it actually start. So, I'm, I'm going back in. I'm going to back probe the wire so I can run some power to it. And while I'm running power to it, I'm going to attempt to uh, to bang on the solenoid with a socket extension, and uh, we'll see if that's gonna make it crank or not. Now, if I can get this to crank, it will be of no consequence if I do not have the system powered on. Yep. Okay, so we're turned on. It should uh, be in running mode. Everything's powering up. This is good. Let's go uh, try to uh, get this started to turn over. See what we get. It said no. Okay, here, yeah, I brought an extension with me. The starter solenoid is right down there. It's gonna bang on it some. Try again. It's a uh, negative. It's reluctant. Let's try one more time here. Holding power onto the starter. Things fried. Yeah, that's uh, it's not gonna happen. Okay, I give up. I'm gonna have to uh, just replace this unit right here in the parking lot. No worries. Here, let's finish getting rid of the trim pieces. We'll just stick that right over there. Uh, what I'm gonna need to do is pull the uh, air box, intake plumbing probably the battery and the battery tray, 
And then uh, there looks like there's some brackets down there. So once I get all that stuff removed, I should be able to get to the two bolts for the starter motor. All right, let's go ahead and get this, uh, this battery disconnected here. We'll start with that. That's a different size than uh, well, what goes there. No worries. Pull out half of the battery hold down. Set that thing down. Let's see here. 12 millimeters? No, 11 millimeters? It's got like a, a nylon nut on it. That's weird. Maybe they lost it. Oh, and a screw. It's got a screw in there also. I expect to find that. No matter. I will remedy that later. Ah, come on, battery. Now we're getting some space in here. Yeah, rumor has it there's a starter motor down there somewhere. Let's get that thing out of here. Yeah, there she is, way down yonder. Um, na -na 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 -na. let's see. There's, I see one of the bolts looks like a 17, and then the other one that's up here somewhere. Where are you, other bolt? Yeah, I can't see it. I'm gonna go ahead and take this uh this air box out. Why not? See, there's uh, there's a possibility that I can get this thing out without pulling the air box or the, the plumbing rather, but. Thing is how I'm out in the parking lot. And I don't feel like making this more difficult than it kind of has to be. It's not really difficult, it's just awkward. Let's get all this stuff out of the way and get some better access to what I need to, uh, well, it's what I need to access. Nonsensical ramblings. But what did he just say? needs to get access to what he needs to access. Who, who talks like that? This guy. All right, here we go. There is our bolt. Found it. There's the other one right there. There's one there. We've got one 13 millimeter for the uh, the big power cable. And then, of course, our little, uh, little connector here. Don't need that. Or oh, that's a 12 mil. That's a 12. Good thing I brought a 12 with me. Hmm, there's some witness marks on that nut. Somebody has removed this before. Unclickage. I don't know why it would have been removed, but there was definitely a wrench on it. I saw the markings. Come here. Please. Oh, that rubber thing's in my way. I can't get a good grip on the nuts. Go. Ooh, the sun's coming out. I'm getting warm. So let's uh let's get this done with some quickness so I can go back inside where we have shade. There, there's our power cable. We'll set that thing aside. And again, looks like a I think that's a 17. I don't know, I can't tell, man. I I, I don't know. No, that's a 14. What am I thinking? Okay, more tools. Okay, I've got a starter, an electric ratchet, 14 millimeter swivel socket on an extension. Let's get out there and see if we can't get this unit pulled out. Yeah, the reason that I brought the, uh, the extension is I need to get to the back bolt, which is back over here. Uh, hard to reach, so we're gonna need to kind of go behind and then over, show. See if I can't sneak this unit in there real quick. I think it's just the two bolts. I hope it is. These are gonna be tight. Unclick. Oh no, come here. It was unthreading and then wedging my tool against the side of the vehicle. Let's see if this is too long of an extension for this bolt here. Now, I think we're good. There we go, unclicked that one. I think that's all we got for parsoners in here. Let's pull this guy out. Wiggle it some. Aha! Beautimus, got it. 
old starting unit. Ooh, that's not cool. Look at that. All that nasty corrosion on that wire. Oh, there's our fail. Look at that. That thing is corroded all the way through. No amount of banging on this was going to help. Look at that. That's nasty. Okay, here's our new replacement remanufactured unit. You can see that that cable is not uh, corroded through and hardened and broken and junk. So we're in good shape here. Let's go ahead and slip this thing into its new home. We'll get her bolted in and reassembled. Let's see if she starts. Uh, go in. Here's a wire in the way, hang on. There we go. Begin wiggling in now. Please. I'll twist it till it goes in. There. Okay. And as usual, both bolts need to go in. Or all bolts, rather, bolts. All both. I can't speak. All bolts need to go in before applying torque to the bolts. There we go. Cannot speak today. Wow, really? My uh, linguistic abilities are waning. Don't know why, but I'm losing my superpowers. Oh no! All right, enough screwing around. Let's uh, let's get this thing tightened down. It's getting hot. Torque package. And the one out back, we'll just sneak this guy around. You guys can't see what I'm doing. Bolt going in. Bolt coming tight. One more. There we go, clickages. Let's pull this dude out here. Okay, let's connect our uh, power cable. That rubber sheath thing is kind of in the way again. It's there to insulate the uh, the eyelet on these connectors. That way, uh, something can't ground out on a on a live cable, which is good. But it also makes this slightly difficult. Everything's slightly difficult. What am I kidding? Doesn't matter what you do. Nut is on, let's make that thing tight. The not super tight. If you over tighten these uh, power cable wires, it will break the threads off inside of the solenoid and then ruin the starter. And that would be bad, we don't wanna do that. Cause then I have to buy another one. Clicks. There we go. And let's go ahead and plug it in, plug it in. All right, very good. Okay, let's back up some. We'll get our plumbing and whatnot reinstalled as soon as I find that piece. Hmm, that doesn't belong there. And gravel in the intake. There. So this guy goes, I forgot how this went, down and in. Something like that. I know that goes up and over. This goes, oh, I'm in the wrong hole. That's the problem. That goes down there. There we go. Let's start getting this stuff buttoned down. Come here, fastener. The shadows. The parking lot shadows are long. Okay, this piece is next. Getting the wires up on top of it. Actually, those are vacuum hoses. Similar. Hey, so what's up with the Toyota Lexuses that seem to have glue on these vacuum hoses that are uh, on the intake plumbing? Every time I see these, there's some kind of like a super glue-like substance on them. And it's it's not very good, but it's, it's always there. Does Toyota glue their vacuum hoses on? Is that uh, what the deal is here? Anybody from Toyota know? Anyone? Let me know in the comment section. 
down below. Why is there glue on my EVAP lines? Why? Why must you glue the rubber? You know, thread crusty bolt. There we go. Good. Okay. Plastec battery tray. Let's uh, maneuver this guy down in here. I need to find a new J hook for that battery uh, hold down thing. That thing was missing. That was uh, not good. Two more super glued hoses right here that's good and we're looking good let's get the battery in the hole interstate battery coming in drop that guy down let's get this thing reconnected tighten down and then uh see how she cranks 11 mil on a lock washer I, that's not even right i need to fix that nonsense Unsehen auf Deutsch. Except this is uh, not a Deutsch vehicle. It's Japanese. But I don't speak much Japanese. I know uh, Konnichiwa. Uh, kamikaze. Um, I think that's about it. I should probably culture myself before attempting to speak the language. Ha! <laughs> Anyway, uh, we're now uh, all put together. Some new starters in. Let's clear the toys off the car, put some plastics back. Actually, no, let's clear the toys. We'll start things the engine, then drive it inside, then we'll put the plastics back. That's the, uh, that's the new plan on my ever-evolving non-plan plan. Good. All right, back into the cabin. Moment of truth. Keys in here. Disarm security. Starting the engine, foot on the brake. Begin engine starting sequence now. Waha, it is alive! And it stalled. First Toyota restart after removing the battery. They will do that. No worries. Warning! Brake is activated. Let's uh, unbrake this. There we go. Deactivated. Let's go ahead and bring this thing on inside. Hood's still up. We're doing this Ace Ventura style pet detective wow it's hot in here it says it's 97 degrees outside i don't think it's actually that hot but uh it's probably 97 in here that's for sure moving on in that's good we'll nose her in right here perfect parking the auto let me out of this sauna holy smokes it's hot in there Woo! now although that thing has a new battery I need to give it a, a little bit of TLC. We saw that that uh, the big J hook was missing. Uh, I don't know if I have a J hook. I might have to order one. I was thinking that there's one uh, in that wrecked uh, Mazda Miata, but I don't remember. Powering on. This is the snap-on light. It's it was expensive and it makes it makes a lot of light, but the battery runs dead quick. I don't like it. I uh, I think. Milwaukee lights would be better off. Uh, not sponsored, but the Milwaukee light has rechargeable batteries and this one does not. I mean, it does, but it's an internal chargeable battery. I know that sounds like rambling, but I'm, I'm actually answering an email. Multitasking, you know? Anyway, <laughs> this thing goes, that's gonna get screwed in right there. And then, like I said, I gotta find a J hook so I can bolt the other end of this thing down. You know why I have to do that? Because somebody else was supposed to and they didn't. They got lazy or they dropped it and lost it and it didn't happen because this battery was just replaced. Oh yeah, that's not what we want to happen. Not at all. Fail. You know what? Playing with fire here, hang on. Powering down. I'm going about this all wrong. All wrong. First of all, I need to get rid of that connection and unconnect this connection again. Get in there. Get 
Get in there. There. You know why I need to get rid of these connections? Because they're dirty and I need to uncrustify them. There it is. Is that the foamy stuff? Battery cleaner, acid detector, no coast style. Passive sales pitch, link in this video's description down below. I'm gonna clean all that corrosion nasty stuff off of here. Let that soak in, we'll hose it off later. And throw some uh, protector cleaner on there. In the meantime, I'm gonna go order a J-hook for that hold down. Unless it's hanging out with all these Mazda parts. Na 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 <laughs> Look at that, I got one. Yep, I knew there was one left over from those Mazda parts. I hope it uh, it's long enough. Maybe, hope it is, I really do. I guess we're gonna find out. Let's just go ahead and, oh yeah, see, the reason it's called a J-hook is because it's a hook that's J-shaped. I know, I'm a simple creature. Anyway, let's feed this thing through. And down here on the other side, it's far away. I don't know if that's gonna reach. Hmm. Okay, it might reach. Let me unbolt this thing like right over here at the, uh, the radiator support. And then I'll take our J hook and unthread it as much as possible. It's almost all the way. So what I'll do is reach this thing down and try to J hook it in position. If I can make, I don't think this hook's long enough, guys. I'm gonna have to order one. Whoa, phone gravity. And if it is long enough, it's uh, very barely long enough. Nope, I'm like an inch too short. It's not gonna work. Well, I tried. Schnikes, that sucks. All right, let me go order one real quick. Okay, I have found a J-hook that's going to fit. So in the meantime, let me uh, make these things uh, a little bit shiny right here. Clean off the corrosion. Make it nice and shiny. I like shiny, especially shiny electrical connections. Bring all that out of there. Good. Okay, let's get rid of the rest of uh, all that cleaner stuff. Yeah, no, not supposed to. You just break clean on batteries, it's okay. If it blows up, it'll just burn the shop down. No big deal. I know, I'm reckless. Okay, go ahead and put that guy back on. We'll tighten her down. Mix. Negative sides. Get that one back on. And I need a screwdriver and a, an 11. Hey, check it out, I got a new screwdriver. It's green, so you know it's good. My uh, my other set of screwdrivers was starting to get really nasty in the handle and I broke a couple of them and the snap-on guy didn't have any replacement parts so I just ended up getting another set. So then I'm gonna have two sets. Which is fine because screwdrivers are one of my tools that I kind of lack, uh, well that I'm lacking in. I've only got like two sets, one regular set and then the super long set. That's whatever. Anyway, let's throw some uh, preventative corrosion uh, coating on these terminals so they stay shiny. I think this stuff went bad. This used to be orange and now it's like a yellow. I wonder if it uh, expired. Hope it still works. It's either it was always yellow and I'm just experiencing the Mandela effect or it did change colors. I, I really don't know. Okay, we are all good for the time being until that J-hook thing arrives. 
So I need to get some of my goodies out of this area. And then I can maybe put some of the plastics back on. Oh, I got this stuff on me. Well, that didn't go as planned. Thought I was gonna just kind of sneak this J-hook thing out of here and instead I got the schmoo all over my fingers. Take that out. We'll cover you up so we don't do that again. Give me back my hook. I'll try to use this on something else later. Uh, there's the nut. Put that right in there. Okay, big piece of plastic trim. That one, I can't really put that on all the way because there's still, yeah, you know what? Number one, I'm talking to myself. Number two, I'm wasting time and being inefficient. So yeah, I'm gonna bolt this on. I'll just J hook it from that side and tighten it down. That's fine. I can't make up my mind on what I want to do. Really? Yeah. There. Fix. Okay. Now I can put this trim back on, put my push pins and whatnot back in, and kind of button this thing up until that uh, that clamp hold down J hook thing arrives. That goes in there. That's all good. That's good. That's good. And the rest of this stuff has to wait. Except for this pin. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and, and that pin. We can do that pin too. Let's get that one. Okay, on hold. Be right back. Don't go anywhere. Watch. Let's do the uh, the first start, stall, restart procedure again. Yep. Starts up and then stalls. Totally normal behavior after a battery disconnect. We're good. Hey, fun fact, the radio didn't reset. That's cool. All right. Okay, delivery time. I have a replacement J-hook. This one's probably way more longer than, oh no, no it's not. It's like exactly as long as I need. That's cool. Uh, except the J is too much of a J and it won't go in a little hole there, yeah. that? Hmm, I need to un-J this J-hook. Okay, that's cool, I can do that. I think the vise will assist me. We'll just put it in the vise and bend it. Will that work? Sure. Begin J-hook bending procedure, like now. Yeah. Hope this is uh, gonna work. Begin J-hook bending now. There, now it's gonna go in. Cool, back to the car. Whew. Are you gonna hook on? Survey says affirmative, we are hooked. So now I just need to run that guy through the hole and then we'll, uh, we'll run it down with a nut. It uh, it came with um, uh, what you call them, wing nuts, but I don't want to use a wing nut, so we're just going to use the nut that came off of the Mazda. I'm determined to put Mazda parts in the Lexus. It's just more better. -er. Tell me the threads are the same. Tell me the threads are the same. Oh, and they're not. Come on. Come on. Stupid. That's fine, it is of no matter. I found, uh, I found a nut. Uh, the problem is, is uh, the original one was metric threads and these are standard threads, but I have a standard thread uh, nylock nut. So I'll just use that. I'm guaranteed it's not gonna come loose because it's a nylock. Yay. Okay, let's run this guy down. Oh no, I ran out of, a, ran out of space here. Need a longer socket. Here, let's consult the gear wrench set. I believe that was an 11 millimeter. That's what I used. Yeah, right next to the missing 10. Got it. I hope this one's long enough. Yes, it is. Give it back. Give it back to me. Okay, batteries tightened down. Engine starts. 
where the starter starts. The starter starts the engine, batteries tightened down, terminals have been cleaned, they're protected. We need to get uh, some plastic -y stuff back on and we're good to go. So uh, that being said, in the interest of time, I'm gonna go ahead and close this video out right now. And uh, I will do such things by dropping my flashlight and thanking each and every one of you by dropping my clips. Man, I'm losing it now. Yeah, I'm done. Right. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If, uh, if you did enjoy this video, please feel free to let me know about that by tapping that like button down below. If you did not enjoy this video, then, uh, well, I can't help you. Sorry. Anyway, again, thanks for watching. And uh, most importantly, don't forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. End of Lexus transmission. There we go. Ree! What about the clips you dropped? I'm like, it's cool. I got a whole box of them. That way I can drop one and it doesn't matter. Haha. -ha. Filling the holes with push pins. That's how we do a good job. Hey. Good, 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 good. All right. Into transmission. See you guys later.